Richard four seven. Richard four seven. Boop, 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 boop. Transforming formulas. Our objective is well to do that. Transform formulas. What do I mean? Well, what I mean is. Here we have um, a formula for the area of a trapezoid. Now what we have here is A, serve, a capital A, um, solved for in terms of H, A, and B. So we're using these terms to describe A. But suppose I wanted to rearrange this formula. And you might be saying, why would you want to rearrange this? Like suppose I wanted to get A alone on one side. I wanted to solve for this A. Why would that help? Well, look at this example for here. Suppose you're given A, H, and B. Capital A, small h, and b. They told you the a area is 84 square units, h is 7, b, so you have to find a. Well, using this formula here, it gets a little messy. Watch. I have to put 84 in for a, one half, h is 7, right? And I a plus b. Oh, no, sorry, a plus 15. So I didn't plug that in, 15. So how would I solve for this? Well, you do it a few ways. Well, I could do. 84 equals 1 half of 7 is 7 halves, A plus 15, right? You can distribute 84 equals 7 halves A plus 7 halves times 15. Um, 84 equals 7 halves A plus 15 times 7. Oh, you know what I could do? Let's not even do that. I could multiply all the way through by 2, couldn't I? That would be a good way to get rid of these fractions. We don't want to see those guys. So here we go, 84 times 2 equals 7a plus 7 times 15. Oh, that looks a lot nicer. And I get 168 equals 7a plus, what's 7 times 15? 105. I subtract 105 from both sides. I get 7a equals, if I subtract 105 from 168, I get... Um, 63. Therefore, you know A is equal to 9. So I found my A. That's very nice. But I have to go through all these steps. Suppose I could, I could rearrange this formula and solve for A so I could just have a formula that I could just plug these numbers in and whoosh, what would come out? Little A. So that's what I want to do. I want to solve for small a. I'm going to start out with my formula here. A equals 1 half H A plus B, right? Isn't that the, thing, the same thing as A equals H over 2, A plus B? I think it is. Um, and can I multiply both sides by 2? Sure I can. So I get 2A equals H, A plus B. Now can I divide by H on both sides? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Now I have 2A over H equals, those guys cancel out, A plus B. Now I subtract B from both sides and I get my... Subtract B, subtract B, I get a nice formula. A is equal to, little a is equal to, 2 big A over H minus B. Now that I have this formula, look how nice. I can just take these numbers, bing, bang, boom, and shove them in this formula, and A comes out. Let's try it out. Ready? A equals 2 times the area, 84, divided by H minus... Sorry, I should have put my H and divided by 7 minus, what is it, B? What's my B? 15, right? And I can solve by going A equals, how many 7s go into 84? You know this. Come on, what, what, more than 10? Yes, 12. So this simplifies to 12. So I get 2 times 12 minus 15. A equals 24 minus 15, which is 9. Okay, so I have this nice formula here. That whenever I want to find A now, I can use that. And that's what we're doing in this chip, with this section. We're going to just rearrange a bunch of formulas. So here we go. This guy, I can solve for little a also. I'm going to solve for A or L. Either one you can solve. I'm going to be similar the same way. Ready? Watch. Here we go. Um, N over 2. I mean, I can distribute this through if I wanted to. Um, you have this 2 in the denominator. So I might as well just multiply both sides by 2 right off the bat. And I get 2S equals N A plus L. I'm going to divide both sides by n. These guys cancel out. I get 2s e over um, n equals a plus l. And the final thing to solve for a, suppose I want to solve for l, I subtract a from both sides. But if I want to solve for a in terms of l, s, and n, I subtract um, l from both sides. So I minus l, minus l, and I end up with 2s over n minus l equals a. And there's my formula. Of course, I can write A, I can switch these around and write A equals this um, symmetry, right? So there we go, I solved for A. Look at this guy, I can solve for F or I can solve for G on here. Um, 
Again, this is a similar one to before. Multiply both sides by 2. I get 2q equals f minus g. Suppose I wanted to solve for f in terms of g and q. Well, I'd add g to both sides, right? And I get f equals 2q minus g. Suppose I wanted to solve instead for f, I wanted to solve for g. Well, at this step, I subtract f from both sides, right? I'd get 2q minus f equals negative g. Then I'd multiply both sides by negative 1, or take the opposite of both sides, and I get negative 2q plus f equals g. So what I have here is notice formulas are great because you can solve for any of the variables. Here's q solved. I solve for q in terms of f and g. Here, f is solved in terms of q and g. Here, g is solved for in terms of q and f, meaning I'm using q and f to describe g. Here's another one. This one's a little tricky because we we're trying to solve for n here. I'm going to solve for n in this problem, but notice there's an n upstairs and downstairs. So you've got to get a little tricky here. First of all, the last thing that we looked at, what was the last thing done to this side? It was divided by n. So let's undo that by multiplying both sides by n. Okay? And we get over here, a n equals 180 n minus 2. Watch how nice this is. a n equals 180 n, I'm going to distribute that 180, minus 2 times 180, 360. Now, I'm trying to solve for n, so I'm not quite sure what to do here. I might as well just get all the n's on both sides. So I'm going to um, subtract 180 n from both sides, right? I might as well get the, the n's on one side. And what do I end up with? Let's see. I end up with a n minus 180 n equals negative 360. How am I going to get that n out of there? Well, just like, what do we do when we have uh, like terms? Are these like terms? You can pretend these are like terms, and n is the variable part, or the right? For instance, if I had um, 200 n minus 180 n, you'd say 200 minus 180 n, wouldn't you? Which is 20 n. Well, the same thing here. It's because it's kind of this is called factoring. We're going to take out factors from both sides. So I'm going to subtract the coefficients of n. This guy minus this guy, just like I would here, 200 minus 180, and I get a minus 180. Look how nice this is. n equals negative 360. Almost done. What do you do when if I had 20 n equals 360? I divide both sides by 20 to get the n all alone, right? Isn't that what you do? We'll do the same thing here. Divide both sides by a minus 180. Look how nice this is. It's unbelievable. It makes me so happy. Here's my formula. n equals negative 360 over a minus 180. And I'm done. Great problem, all right? Tricky step here, factoring that. Remember, we have like terms there. Subtract the coefficients. Bada-bing, bada-boom.